Today I'll show you the bridge, the command center, the brain of the vessel. Entering through the stairs, we'll start off from the bridge wing. From here, leaning over, we can see the side of the ship. It's a critical vantage point for when berthing or docking. The captain and the harbor pilot usually stand around here so that they can gauge the position of the ship. We have life buoys all over the ship. Two of them are located on each side of the bridge wing. They are specially designed with a quick release mechanism for a speedy rescue. Then we've got this barbecue stove looking thingy on both port and starboard bridge wing. It's a remote panel. Here you find controls for the bow thrusters. Indicators for speed, engine RPM, rate of turn, heading, compass, speaker and mic. This is a gyro repeater for taking bearings of objects or celestial bodies. This is an EPIRB, short for Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon. It does what its name suggests. It's installed out here in the open space because if the ship ever sinks, it can float up. Firebox and fire hydrant are all over the ship and it's standard to have one each on a bridge wing. Inside the bridge, CO2 extinguisher for all the electronics in case of a fire, pantry for snacks and drinks, This tall chair is a pilot chair. There is always a designated pilot chair for maritime pilots. He likes that seat. No matter what type of ship you're on. An azimuth ring. Used in conjunction with the gyro repeater outside for taking bearings of objects. SART on each side of the bridge. SART is short for search and rescue radar transponder. This is what it looks like when it's activated. The other ships can locate you from the radars. CVS, with its turning motion, on a heavy snow day, it'll clear the glass so we can see it outside. Fire plan, damage control plan, dangerous good plan, all for emergency use. Most unfortunate, Captain. There's no stopping it. Titanic. Founder. Visibility is the utmost importance in navigation, so we've got sunscreen for all the windows. Moving on to the center console, this is where most of electronic navigation equipments are. Starting from the port side, we've got DGPS for positioning, Loran C, which no one uses anymore, AIS, automatic identification system for a ship, Actus short for Electronic Chart Display Information System. It's a digital version of paper charts. Gents, I give you the fountain of youth. Sadly, we still use paper charts in conjunction with electronic charts. GMDSS, Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, fancy name for communication units, which consist of VHF-1, two, and three. VHF, very high frequency, in my experience, can reach up to 40 nautical miles. MFHF, depends on your frequency and weather conditions, can reach up to hundreds of miles. SAT-C and SAT-F, satellites, well, they cover the globe. Handheld UHF, limited to line of sight. We've got three radars. One radar antenna on the forward mast and two at the back on the main mast.
numerous indicators. Bridge indicating unit. It's mostly about engine status, power status, and air pressure. Program bypass for some extreme maneuvers if you want to pull a Captain Phillips. Cancel the limits. One, two, nine. Bow thruster controllers, same as the one outside on the bridge wing console. Telegraph transmitter. It's linked directly down to the engine room telegraph, or chat burn as old timers would call it. Steering gear controls. Autopilot. The helm or steering wheel. We switch to manual hand steering when we need the precision. Navigation lights control. Pilot door indicator. It shows if the pilot door are shut completely closed. The door is located very close to the waterline, which is why we give extra attention. Watertight door indicator for the whole ship. Internal telephone for communication within the ship. Sound powered internal telephone for when the internal phone fails. PA system when the internal and sound power fails. Cadet when internal, sound powered, and PA system fails. You send him to pass messages. Morse code key. We've got three life jacket and three immersion suits. 12 rocket flares, just like the ones in Captain Phillips. First aid box. Flag cabinet. That's about it for the bridge tour. No emergency escape this time around. It's a small space, very compact, but with lots of equipment. Let me know down in the comments below what else you'd like to see. For sailors with internet access, please help me out by answering some of the questions you see in the comments, since I'm probably a week away from any internet at the moment. As always, thanks for watching, see you next time.